Geographical Analysis, Lecture 10, Continuous Probability Distributions. We've talked a lot about distributions so far in this class. Typically, we've been using distributions in two ways, either to describe a data set that we've observed, in which case we're talking about collected empirical data, or we've talked over the last two classes about, or over the last class, about uh, theoretical probability distributions, a distribution that's defined by mathematical rules uh, that allows us to predict the probability associated with events occurring. And the distribution of probabilities we've called, say, the probability distribution function. On the empirical side, we can differentiate between collected data and collectible data. We might go out and collect a sample of people and therefore have a distribution of, of the age of those of, of our sample. Now, we might not have the distribution of age for the entire population that we're interested in, but that is technically still some sort of collectible empirical data. Both of those collected and collectible empirical data sets are quite different from the kind that we're going to discuss this class on theoretical uh, distributions, which again, like I said, are derived from a set of mathematical rules. So a theoretical distribution uh, has a probability function, which is a mathematical formula describing the probability of obtaining a certain value from the distribution. So if our values are ages of people, we might have some rules that tell us what probability it is that we would find someone who's 50 years old or 65 years old. These probability distributions are going to depend on parameters, which are factors that determine the particular shape of a given probability distribution function. So for example, we could have a probability distribution function of rolling a fair die. In this case, the probability of rolling a one, uh, sorry, the probability of rolling one of the sides is equal to one divided by the number of faces of the die. So in, this, in, in the case of a regular die with six sides, the probability of obtaining each outcome is one-sixth, and we have a probability distribution function that essentially looks like a box. Or really, this is a discrete distribution function, so we have the six lines, one, two, three, four, five, six, for the six different outcomes. Each of these has a value of one-sixth. If we wanted to do this for, say, flipping a coin, we would have the same thing, only there would only be two outcomes, one or zero and one, or heads and tails. And each of the probabilities would be a half. Now, in the case of the die, we're going to say that k is a parameter of the probability function, because the shape of the function is going to depend on how many sides the die has. So in this case, when k is equal to 6, we have a probability distribution that looks like this. And when k is equal to 2, which is essentially the same thing as flipping a coin, we have a probability distribution that looks like that.